Agenda item 9A is the industrial revenue bonds for Neosho County Assisted Living, LLC. Um, on December 16, 2013, the City Commission conducted a public hearing in regards to the issuance of IRBs for Neosho County Assisted Living, LLC. The proposed project will include assisted living facility and a memory care unit. Do we have anybody that wants to come up and talk in regards to country place? Only if there's any, I'm here only if they have questions on that. I have one question. Uh, this is for me personally. Why didn't uh, Country Place Assist Living use the uh, neighborhood revitalization program instead of requesting a 10 year tax abatement? What did you have there? If you wouldn't mind, please. Uh, the main reason that we decided to use the IRB is it's just another form of financing and the, uh, the uh, abatement rates are just a little bit better. And on the tax abatement, we say it's 10 years, but this is a uh, non-per-profit -per type deal. How long will this tax abatement continue? Forever? This yeah. one's only... This one is a for-profit company. It's, so it's, it's for-profit. Yeah. So it's only 10 years okay, then it'll so be on the tax rate. Anything rules. else done? would be all for profit then. That's correct. So Okay, well, so the abatement's 10 years and then it comes onto the tax roll regardless. That's correct. Yeah. And and two of the main reasons that we are asking for the tax abatement, uh, first one is to offset our costs as we're beginning. You know, any company runs into to, uh, high, high uh, bills in the beginning while we're going through the lease up. And then to remain competitive in rural markets, we, we use any extra money, you know, gain from the abatements to help keep our rents low. It wouldn't be money for our pockets, it'd be to keep rents low. And if I could make one more comment, um, I think you all have seen the uh, report that Steve, uh, let's see, Steve Robb had made a tax abatement cost benefit analysis of Neosho County Assisted Living. You guys all familiar with that report. Mm -hmm. um, on the top of the second page, um, you know, when you ask somebody like Steve to sum this up in, in a, you know, a sentence or two, um, and, and Steve does hundreds of these. He, he is a professional. This is what he does for a living. Uh, the top of sec page two, the bottom of that paragraph underline says, generally a public entity would like to have a benefit to cost ratio of 1.3 or better in order to grant, uh, to grant a tax abatement and or other incentives. However, the governing body may take into account the other economic benefits of the project in making that decision. So if you go down to the middle of that page, um, under the graph right here, city of Chinoo, actual benefit to cost ratio is 2.50. That doesn't sound like a lot when up there it says 1.3 is, is kind of the threshold to, to consider. But in talking to Steve and really getting to understand what all this says and educating myself, uh, he says in all, all the hundreds that he's done, very rarely does he see any that exceed the 1.3. Um, and when you do see anything that uh, exceeds the 1.3, uh, getting to two is, is really good. He says that he can only count about 10 times ever where he's seen anything of, of two or above. So from Steve's perspective, you know, this, is a, this is a very good thing. Um, the last part of that sentence that I read, the governing, governing body may take into account the other economic benefits of the project in making that decision. Um, and I would just like to say some of the other you know, long-term benefits that we have are, of course, the 20 to 25 full-time equivalent positions and $1 million, of, uh, $1 million injected annually into the economy. We're talking about a $4 million project and retaining the senior into the project. You know, when are we going to start? What is their anticipated day to start on this thing? So right now we are in the financing phase of the project. Uh, we anticipate to have that done in late January. Um, have the fully financed package from the bank somewhere around middle of February. If everything goes to plan, we could be turning dirt there April 1st.